Hey everyone, my name's Camilla. I'm here from a company called Mapbox. Um, I've been working at Mapbox for about three years. I uh, started as a software engineer. Uh, now I run product for our imagery team. Um, let me just give you a quick overview of, of what Mapbox does, um, and then I'll dive into some of the stuff that we do on the imagery team and, and what we do uh, on AWS in particular. Um, so Mapbox is a mapping platform. We do all things location. Um, so uh, kind of at the core of our business is that we make maps, um, make maps for you to use. Um, we also have other geographic services, uh, traffic, directions, geographic search, these types of things that you get to plug into your applications. Um, but again, at the core of what we do is, is making maps. Um, so these are some of, the, um, some of the default maps that you get when you sign up for a mapbox.com account. Um, you can just kind of plug and play these. Um, you can also um, make your own maps, so you can bring custom data. So this is kind of a BYO platform, bring your own custom data to lay on top of what we provide with you. You can also operate with your own data kind of in a vacuum. You don't have to touch ours at all. Um, and we also provide uh, data styling tools. So this is um, just showing you Mapbox Studio. Mapbox Studio is kind of what our customers like to refer to as um, Photoshop for geographic data. So it allows you to do all sorts of custom design, um, again, on our data or on yours. Um, so at the end of the day, it's really all about customization on our platform. Um, this is the type of thing that allows Financial Times to write a compelling story and show visualizations about the housing crisis in London, right? So this is um, you know, data that they've brought and styled with our tools um, overlaid on to a geographic background showing London, um, which is the data that we've provided them um, as the contextual information. Um, this is also the type of stuff that allows RunKeeper to put maps um, into their application that are totally uh, styled in line with their brand guidelines. Um, this is what allows their users to track their runs, you know, track their activity, um, people to plan routes. Um, so that's that kind of like bring your own data, data editing part of things. Um, these are just a few other examples of some of the maps in our map gallery. Um, so mapbox.com slash gallery is a really fun place to go and peruse just to kind of check out uh, art of the possible. Um, a lot of our designers have posted their own work there. You can also check out a lot of what our customers have done. Uh, mapbox.com slash gallery. Take a look. <clears throat> so um, you might be asking, what is it that the actual imagery team at Mapbox does um, outside of creating really awesome emojis for ourselves? Um, this is our team of nine. So we've got uh, Virginia, Jacques, Charlie, Damon, myself, Sean, Matt, Pratik, and Vincent. Um, so what is it that we do at Mapbox? Um, we make maps. Uh, that's really at the core of what we're doing inside of Mapbox. So um, this map all the way on the end here is our imagery base map. This is a global coverage of imagery. Um, it's called Mapbox Satellite. It's a little bit of a misnomer because it's not just satellite data anymore. We process um, aerial imagery, drone imagery to the base map as well. But so this is going to be your backdrop for anything that you want, um, you know, satellite imagery or, or an imagery um, kind of context for. Um, we also um, process and publish imagery uh, specific to our clients. Um, so we will ingest data on our back end and publish it privately to their accounts so they can control access to those maps um, via URL and an access token. Um, and then I'll talk also a little bit about some of the research and development stuff that we do. Um, and so kind of through these three threads, I'll talk to you about just the scale at which we process imagery and then touch on some of the um, Amazon services that we use to do that. <clears throat> Oops. Um, so we'll just go through base map maintenance first. So again, the base map is, is that Mapbox satellite product that you get with a free or paid um, Mapbox account. Um, so this is going to be a global coverage of imagery. Um, and, and I'm going to talk you through kind of three different tiers that, that this imagery exists at. We have low resolution imagery. That's what you're looking at here right now. Um, this is the most zoomed out view that you can see uh, um, of the Earth in, in the Mapbox satellite product. Um, so at this zoom level, um, this is all imagery captured from a satellite that's living about 438 miles up in the sky. Um, every image that it captures is about 1,400 miles wide. So that's the distance from here to uh, about Kansas or, or maybe the, the far uh, Colorado border. Um, so these are really, really massive images. And you can imagine that when you're capturing image, imagery that's that wide um, and th from that far away from the Earth, you can cover quite a bit of ground every day. So this, um, this sensor on the Aqua satellite is able to um, actually cover the entire surface of the Earth every single day. So it's a huge volume of imagery. Um, but you can also imagine that at this, um, at this uh, zoom level, you're not seeing a ton of change every day. Um, so this isn't, this isn't a layer that we need to update very frequently. Um, but, but when we do update it, it's, it's quite a bit of data that we're processing. 
Um, when you zoom in a little bit, you kind of get to more of this landscape level. Um, this imagery is also collected by a satellite. This is from the Landsat series of satellites. Um, you know, also living about 440 miles above the Earth um, uh, in orbit. Um, but this, uh, this satellite and this sensor uh, captures imagery that's about 115 miles wide as opposed to 1,400. So that's about the distance from here to uh, maybe Yosemite, probably a little bit closer than that. Um, so still pretty massive images, um, but you can't really collect the entire world in a single day. Um, it takes uh, about 16 days for this sensor to collect imagery that covers the entire surface of the Earth. Um, Again, you know, you're not seeing a ton of change every day. Um, the, you know, some of this landscape change is, is going to be on the order of kind of like new, new metropolises popping up and, and being able to see kind of that cityscape change. So we don't update this imagery that frequently either. But again, when we do, um, it's, it's happening at a really large scale. Um, so the third tier is the, is the high resolution stuff. Um, so this is this is kind of like the, the highest resolution tier that we're processing imagery at um, for the for the Mapbox satellite base map. Um, so this we do process high resolution satellite imagery for this, but a lot of times we're actually processing aerial imagery. So rather than um, a bird that's sitting you know hundreds of miles um, up in the sky, this is uh, uh, airplanes that are flying anywhere from 5,000 feet to uh, maybe 15 or 18,000 feet at the highest to collect images that are maybe, uh, you know, half a mile wide. Um, so, so completely different collections. Um, you know, we're now processing, you know, hundreds or thousands of images to cover the same amount of ground that, that a, uh, a satellite image could cover, cover in a single shot. Um, and so at this scale, it's not a single sensor, it's not a single agency that we're purchasing imagery from. We're working with a ton of different agencies, um, both private and public. So this is um, some imagery, this is Sydney. Um, the Australian government collects imagery um, of a bunch of their, their different cities uh, and publishes that, so we purchase that from the Australian government. Um, another one of my other favorite collections is done in Germany. Um, this is uh, shipping ports in Hamburg. So again, you know, we're collecting imagery from, from tons of different agencies. It comes in all different formats sizes, we have to wrangle that and put it through the same pipeline that we put everything else through. So this just kind of gives you, gives, you, gives you an idea of the variety of data that we're working with. Um, to kind of round up some of the things that go into um, managing that base map, we're basically covering the Earth three times over, right? Low resolution, medium resolution, and high resolution. We're working with a ton of different sensor types, different swath widths or, or, or width of the imagery, um, different vendors, so they all have different delivery formats, different, different formats that they're actually putting the imagery in. We have to kind of untie that and normalize it before we can push it through the pipeline. Um, but the, the thing that works to our benefit here is that we have these very defined update intervals, right? So we know when we're going to update the base map. Um, this is going to be a little bit different when I talk about uh, client publishing and R&D stuff. Um, so I'll move on to that now. Um, I lumped these together just in the interest of time since this is a lightning talk. <laughs> Um, so, uh, in terms of client publishing, um, you know, outside of just that base map product, we also do custom custom maps, custom imagery uploads for our customers. Um, so, uh, I'll just give you two quick examples of this. Um, uh, this one on the, uh, I guess, my right um, is drone imagery. Um, this was collected by a field survey that was done. Uh, this is in Vanuatu after a big storm went through. Um, so this is imagery that was able to be uploaded from the field, pushed through our backend processing chain, uh, and shared via URL um, with privacy you know, governed by an access token so that um, this imagery could be distributed to people who could help out with damage assessment from their offices same day um, and really help aid, aid what's going on on the ground. Um, so that's, you know, one type of client processing that we do that's not necessarily super predictable, right? You know, other drone imagery we process is coming from construction sites or, or agricultural monitoring, but, but sometimes the, the disaster stuff or the storm response stuff is, is stuff that we can't really predict. So our pipeline has to be necessarily flexible so that it can handle, um, you know, kind of that like at the moment processing need. Um, on the other side of the screen, you see um, some of that really high-res satellite imagery that I mentioned earlier. So this is imagery from a company called Digital Globe. Um, Digital Globe is one of the few companies in the world that has this really high-resolution um, image process or um, capability from satellite uh, satellite. Uh, from satellites. Um, so, so they have a massive archive of really high resolution satellite imagery. They've been in the game for 10 years plus. Um, and, and they have been serving their customers, um, you know, through their own interface where they go and they kind of dig through the archives and find the imagery that they need. They decided that they kind of wanted to break that paradigm and they wanted their customers to be able to access imagery via URLs and via these kind of curated products. And so um, we exposed our backend processing uh, engine to them and they ended up uploading about two and a half petabytes of imagery 
from their archives into three separate products that their customers can now access um, via these, these unique endpoints. Um, we're doing you know, uh, continual uploads, up updating those products for them on a monthly basis, um, and sometimes more frequently depending on the imagery that, that they're actually uh, capturing and, and some of this event-driven stuff. You know, if there's a storm, they're going to want to um, you know, provide high-resolution imagery to help out people like the Red Cross and, and other folks who are on the ground. Um, so just some quick examples of, of some of the imagery that we're doing on the client processing side. Um, just to touch on uh, research and development a little bit, this is um, actually imagery from uh, one of the sensors I mentioned earlier, Landsat. So Amazon hosts, um, am, uh, hosts Landsat data for free on, um, on S3 via their public data sets program. Um, this is a program where they're hosting you know, tons of health data and, and imagery and weather data um, that you can access for free. Um, and this has been really amazing for us because this is a massive data set. It's being updated every single day. Um, every single day there's about, uh, I think, uh, 432 new images approximately collected every day by the Landsat satellite, and they're hitting the Landsat PDS, that S3 bucket, throughout the day every day. As soon as that imagery is hitting that bucket, we get an event notification, it gets pulled into our pipeline, it gets published immediately. Um, so this is from the early days of us creating that, that, live, um, that live working pipeline. This is Landsat Live. Um, if you Google Mapbox Landsat Live, you'll, you'll find a, a fun interactive website where you can actually click on these images. You can kind of see footprints overlaid here. You can click on them, um, interact with the metadata for that imagery, and, and see how quickly it is being collected. So this is same day publishing. <clears throat> so um, in terms of client, uh, client processing and some of this R&D stuff, you know, to go back to those, those same things that I talked about earlier with, with our, our in-house Mapbox satellite product, what, what differs here is that we're covering the Earth, like we're not really sure how many times over, right? That, that digital globe set of, set of um, layers, uh, you know, that was maybe the world three times over. With Landsat Live, we're doing the world over every um, 16 days. Um, and, and then, you know, in addition, uh, some of the other aerial back-end stuff that we're doing, drone processing, we're, we're you know, co continually covering, covering the Earth with, with fresh imagery. Um, again, multiple sensor type, types, different swath widths, different vendors. Um, and what's different here is that we have undefined update intervals, right? So we have to be really flexible to, um, to people who want to process their imagery now and, and, and don't want to wait. And, and so our, our processing engine has to be immediately scalable and we have to be immediately able to kind of like take the extra brunt of somebody who, who has a massive upload that's very uh, time sensitive. <clears throat> Um, so outside of the software we write and the imagery that we process, um, let's get, get down to talking about the AWS stuff that we use. Um, it all really comes down to one thing, and that is computing resources. So here we are hanging out in the office, uh, you know, munging images, writing software. We send it through the internet, and Amazon does this like wonderful little dance. We deploy it to their machines, and, and they do everything that we need. Um, and we do this at scale, right? So again, we're covering the world many times over with imagery. Um, so to, to talk about some of the Amazon services that we're using, we're using S3, like I mentioned, not just the AWS um, uh, PDS, but we're using, um, we're using S3 for all of our storage, right? This is from the raw imagery through all of the processing stages to the final tiles that we're serving out in your application. Um, we're using event notifications for every part of this, right? So our processing chain is, is split up into all of these different stages. You know, from the time a, a image, a raw image lands um, in a bucket, it gets kicked off into a process, it gets moved into a separate bucket um, for a prep and for a composite stage, and then finally to the, to the final tile location. Um, simple queue service, right? This is just the waiting queue for, for um, waiting for an EC2 to be able to grab the imagery that you need to move into, um, into the next process. EC2s and auto scaling. Auto scaling is really what allows us to be super flexible in terms of the number of machines that we're using at any given time. This is just very slightly out of date because we're actually not just using flat EC2s anymore. We've moved all of our infrastructure over to using containers over the last couple months. So we're completely on ECS. If anybody's interested in talking about the transition to using Docker and containers and the ECS service. Um, I will be at the startup desk around the corner. Um, if you can't hang around it and talk, um, we also have our platform team who just published a great blog post about how moving to ECS has been a huge cost savings um, and has been really good for us on the security side of things. So check out mapbox.com slash 
blog to look for that blog post. It's a really quick read and, and really informative um, if that's interesting to you. Um, and again, some of the other things that we're using are these public data sets. Um, thank you to uh, Jed Sundwald, who uh, at AWS really helped spearhead that project. Um, and then Lambda functions. So these are for some of the smaller processing tasks that, that we have that are not necessarily, we don't, we don't need to provision our own computers to do. These are just kind of like small little da data munging processes that can be done kind of on the fly via AWS's Lambda functions. Um, so finally, um, the last thing that we really use AWS for is that is, is serving all of this imagery once it's processed, serving it out to our customers. So we are in every single AWS um, availability zone. So if you are um, you know, using your running app and you're running around Virginia, you're probably going to be getting uh, imagery tiles or, or map tiles from a server uh, from an endpoint in Virginia. But if you're in the UAE, um, you're probably going to be getting them from, from somewhere like India. So this helps us get information to our customers as fast as possible. Right? So you're not out for a bike ride or run and like wondering where your next turn is um, and waiting for a minute or two minutes for that tile to load. You, you have that information as soon as you need it. You can make that timely turn um, and, and you can trust that that application is going to serve your needs. Um, so just to round up, um, we make maps. Um, we help make you guys make maps. Um, this all happens on AWS. Uh, on the imagery side, you get a little help from the Mapbox satellite team. Uh, and uh, Pixel Monster, who I didn't really mention earlier, but that's our, um, that's our name for our backend processing engine. So that's our little mas mascot there. Um, so I think uh, that's it. Um, thank you so much. If anybody has any questions, I'm here. I'm at the um, desk around the corner um, for the next uh, two hours or so. I'm here till 2. Uh, and thank you all so much.